I am James Hake. This is the Hake Report. It is Wednesday, November 27th, 2019. And yes, we are live. The Jesse Lee Peterson show is live and the Hake Report is live tomorrow, Sunday. <laughs> I keep on saying Sunday. Because it's like a holiday, a holy day, right? Thanksgiving. Tomorrow, Thanksgiving. Thursday, November 28th, 2019. And Friday, too, by the way. If, if God is willing and if the crew... Assuming the creek does not rise. <laughs> I'm trying to say it in proper English. <laughs> I'm trying to say it the white way, right? So, you can call in 888-775-3773. It's finally raining. That's so nice. Let me show you my weather app. Because it's so cool. It makes It's so calming. <laughs> can you zoom in on it? I don't know if you can see the raindrops. It's so hard to even see the raindrops outside the window. Right? Let alone the simulated raindrops in my phone, but Los Angeles, 54 degrees, freezing! <laughs> uh, everybody's jealous. And yes, it's projected to rain all, all day. Except for 3 p.m. till 8 p.m., but back on 9 p.m. And it's supposed to be like a 100% chance of rain 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. tomorrow. We'll see about that. Anyways, guys. Um... By the way, Joel, do you have the picture? We created a new t-shirt design for the Jesse Lee Peterson Teespring store. We have like four different Teespring stores. I know it's confusing, but um, we're doing our best. We're boomers. <laughs> Even though I'm millennial or X millen XY. XY is the male, right? Okay, check your email um, from a couple days ago. Or from yesterday morning, Joel. We created a t-shirt design, and I have to put the black ink version up, maybe today. But I have the white ink version up on the Jesse Lee Peterson Teespring store. Teespring.com slash stores slash Jesse Lee Peterson. And it's called Tom Like a Mug with Jesse Lee Peterson. And Jesse, if you don't know, is the executive producer of the Hake Report, so thank you, Jesse. So once you find it, just put it up and tell me that you have it up. Oh, there it is. Tom Like a Mug with Jesse Lee Peterson. So, um, we should have, well, I mean, those are up now, for, available for sale. We posted it in the community post on Jesse Lee Peterson's YouTube channel as well. And there's a link directly to it. There. Go to YouTube, and it's Jesse Lee Peterson channel. And then community posts, and then there's a link picture of this shirt. So it's a, a nice little design. I mean, I, I only ever do just direct, plain white or black um, text. Bebas new. New. Bebas new. Um, font. <laughs> but I think it looks attractive. I think it's cool. So um, I'm going to get to calls. But, um, real fast, I was arguing with a guy on Instagram, I don't know if he's a follower, um, on Instagram or not, about the fact that, I, and I call it a fact, that Donald Trump, the president, is a law and order guy. Because I posted on my Instagram, The Hate Report, that, um, I read one book, um, the, for the first time in my adult life. I have read a complete book, other than the Bible, which I did read in my adult life in its entirety, one time. And I've read, like, other passages, like, multiple times. But, for the first time, I read another book. And that was The United States of... Oh, you know what? I, I forgot. I read... <laughs> I read The Antidote. I read The Antidote in its entirety. <laughs> That's another good book. And I read The Seven Guaranteed Steps to Spiritual... Family and financial success, although 
Jesse calls it a guide. He doesn't necessarily call it a book. I call it a book or a booklet. <laughs> but anyways, I read The United States of Trump by Bill O'Reilly. A couple of boomers that I respect, right? Trump, O'Reilly. Especially Trump, but I respect O'Reilly. And O'Reilly, Bill O'Reilly, the journalist, described Trump as a law and order guy. And so I posted the picture of that um, passage in the book on Instagram and said, oh, I recommend this book. It's nice. And I also covered it on the show, right? I covered it probably a couple of weeks ago now, a few days after Jesse interviewed him or a couple. And I covered some of the points that Bill O'Reilly makes about Donald Trump that I thought were interesting. So this guy on Instagram called it fake news. And he makes a good point that Donald Trump signed the First Step Act. And the First Step Act is one of those so-called criminal justice reform, stupid, let pe let criminals out of jail early if they're acting nice or, I don't know, something dumb, right? First Step Act. Let them, let them free and something. And so this has happened. He signed that bill and one has, at least one criminal has gotten out of jail, prison. I saw it on Fox News on Tucker Carlson's show. He has an okay show, right? He's pretty nice. And this guy got out of prison and went out and murdered somebody. I think. And so that was pushed, this First Step Act was pushed by Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law, Jewish son-in-law, married Ivanka Trump, the pretty lady, she's tall. I found out that Ivanka Trump is 5 foot 11. I wonder how tall Jared Kushner is. Go Google Jared Kushner height, if you can. Oh, okay. Well, we'll find out. But, yeah, the f this First Step Act that Donald Trump signed, that was a mistake. He's 6'3"? <gasps> Jared Kushner is 6'3"? Six, 6'3". Three? Six three. What do you guys overseas call those people? Because you guys measure by, what, centimeters? <laughs> or something? <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, that was, a, that was a mistake. He should not have done that, and I guess he could repeal it. Can he repeal it? I don't know if he can repeal it. But this guy, 190 centimeters, <laughs> I don't know what that even means, I can't even comprehend. I know 2.54 centimeters is an inch, but I can't get past the math past that. My father was a math teacher, he wrote some math books. My sister is a math teacher, my, my brother is a math teacher, but I don't really want to do the math. How tall are you, Hake? I'm 5 foot 9 and a quarter. At the end of the day, maybe five foot nine and three quarters at the beginning when I've slept and my spine has stretched. I have a pretty long... <laughs> Take a six four. No, I'm not. <laughs> I have a pretty uh, long torso, short le shorter legs. But, uh, yeah. It was he, was... he was wrong to do that. But I said he still... My point stands, he still is a law and order guy despite listening to, you know, his daughter and his son-in-law, liberal son-in-law. And he said, no, but he's still going to support him, so I don't want to fight too much with the guy. And he makes a, a solid point. I mean, Trump is making mistakes, and I knew going into it that Trump would do some things that, we dis that I disagree with. I knew going into it. I knew that he was um, kind of sort of kissing up to the gays, not as bad as a bunch of other people, but I knew that he w was kind of liberal. But I knew that he was a man, and solid, and way better than anybody else. And he does stand with law enforcement. For even from the time that he took out that full-page ad way back in the early 90s, I guess it was, during the Central Park Five thing, he said, a pr people that commit crimes like this deserve the death penalty. Where this woman was ra beaten and raped almost to death, the Central Park jogger woman, doesn't even remember it. And he said, somebody who commits a crime like this, and she, it was unclear whether she was going to live at the time, I think. So he was, he's always been for uh, real justice, not social justice. And he's been for the police and the military and all that. So that's good. 
Um, yeah. Michael's Trucking LLC says, I'm taller than Hake. They're going off. My dad is 5'4", mom 5'3", and my sister 4'11". I'm lucky in the same height as Hake. Nice. Right on, Trevor. Jesse's not 5'8". No, that's not true. Yeah, Jesse's... I would say Jesse's about 5'10". Anyways, guys, um... Let me get to some calls. But I... I mean, if you want to get it off your chest about this Trump and the First Step Act and all this stuff, because we do need to hash it out, because there's a whole lot of people listening to the criticisms in the media and even among the right against Trump, and we got to hash it out because um, we want the support for Trump to be strong, and this, and we want Trump to be strong too, right? And it's good to hold his feet to the fire about stuff, but it's not good to be naggers and emotional and passionate about that stuff. Yes, people have died as a result, seemingly, apparently, according to Fox News and stuff. As a result of the First Step Act, it's, it was wrong. But um, he's still a law and order guy. He doesn't stand with this stupid Black Lives Matter stuff. I don't like um, the kissing up to the blacks that's been going on amongst all of those people, including Rand Paul kissing up to the blacks. I, and when I say kissing up to the blacks, I mean with this criminal justice reform and legalizing marijuana, which is also kissing up to the millennials and everybody, right? It's, it's messed up. So I don't like this soft on crime stuff, and I don't think that Trump is meant to be soft on crime. I, thought, I think that he thought that he was doing right. Anyways... Let me get to some calls, and then I, I want to touch on that Hong Kong thing. I did a report on Hake News yesterday morning, first hour, on Hong Kong. And you heard, you heard Nick, the Colombian, the Colombian, Miami-born Canadian. <laughs> he ambiguous. Jesse Lee Peterson's um, new producer. Give a report about the unrest and the leftism down in South America, and um, I got a text from a listener who said, Maria, said, thank you for bringing up uh, the real reasons behind the Hong Kong unrest, which I believe is controlled opposition. There's some that, are, that really want what's right, really want independence, and then there's some that are just communists. And now Nick brought up the Colombian situation. It's so nice. It is nice to see things clearly. Right on. That's what we want. So, is it Levon? That's right. From Las Vegas, Nevada. First time caller. Levon, how are you? Hey, Nick. I'm doing good. How are you? Fine. I'm James. But Oh, sorry. James. James Hake. Yeah. Hey, yep. man. How you been? Fine. Thank you. Nice to hear from you. Good, good, man. Good. So, um... I have a question for you. Okay. Okay, so I've been watching the New American lately. I don't. Did you pay attention to those guys at all? The New Alex American and them. The, yeah. Who? The New American. Um, they're they're like a, a a real news outlet. Okay. You know, um, the guy's name's Alex Newman, and there's there's a couple. Oh, of okay. Yeah, there. yeah. I, I'm yeah, familiar like with John Alex Burke Newman. Society type folks. These are yeah. patriots. Well, they just released a report about an outfit called Liberation Road. It's operating in Virginia and, and other places around the United States, and apparently these guys are a bunch of pro-China communists. Wow. And, and they're electing Democrats in America, and they're bragging about it. What are we to do about this? This is insane. Yeah, I don't know, man. We just expose it and um, call them out, be bold and brazen. You know, one thing uh -huh. that the left has done is there's this thing that's called the Overton window. And they've pulled oh. it because by being unashamedly anti-American, anti-white, anti-Christian, and, and pro-homosexual, LGBTQIA stuff, uh -huh. even pro-pedophilia. I mean, pro... Uh, actually, not, I don't know if they're pro-pedophilia, well, but they're, like, well, defending they, it as, as, as yeah. just a... Just a sexual orientation that you can't control, that you mm. should just don't act on it type of stuff, right? Yeah, they're apologizing for it. Yeah, uh, not even, they're defending it, when, if yeah. you say apologizing for it. 
yeah, so they are evil and they're pushing this stuff and they're pushing socialism unashamedly mm-hmm. And you see the guys on the right I can kind of understand the guys I, I call it the right right but the guys that are pro um, pro white are uh-huh. really pushing hard on the pro white stuff because they see the left doing this unashamed push all that you want as hard as you can. Right. Whereas it's like identity politics. Yeah, whereas the guys like Obama are more like pretending not to be as far left as they really are. But he's like, sure. Yeah, let's not outwardly be leftist even though he is pretty outwardly leftist. But he's right. trying to string along the people little by little. Right. But, they're trying to deceive people. Yeah, they both I guess serve a role on the left. Yeah. And I think that we need to unashamedly push for what's right, whereas some of these guys, these conservatives, think that if you keep on pushing on homosexuality or abortion, they think that's a losing issue, which is, really? it doesn't have to be a losing issue. The reason that it loses is because, yeah, actually some of the Christians, most of them, um, they actually do hate. They do hate. And so that when you're fighting hate with hate, the hater that's supposed to be fighting for what's right is going to lose. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, um, sure. because that's what the Christians are. They are fighting for what's right, but they're fighting in the wrong way. They don't know how to fight. Uh-huh. And so, like, if you I've have s- somebody who knows how to fight right, Trump uh-huh. seems to do it pretty well. Um, Jesse seems to do it pretty well. Um, and all that stuff. Yeah. I don't know. How would you say that those guys do it? I mean, it, I, I, I want to tell you my opinion. I feel like it's like they do it, and Jesse says it explicitly, right? Without the spirit of anger. Yeah. That really seems to be the most effective way to combat these crazies, because otherwise, like, if you get angry with them, they just turn the tables on you, and they say, oh, look at you. Right. And, and they accuse you of whatever they're doing. Yeah. A lot of times. You know, but they, don't they back down with projection. that stuff. Don't back no. down with that stuff. No, 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 yeah. for sure. Yeah, okay. All right, well, I just want to know if you had heard about that stuff, because I thought that was totally crazy. It's super anti-American, yeah. and it's just really, really, really wrong. And, and I'm just surprised that so many Americans could be so foolish and stupid and hateful that they would even, they would even listen to these guys. Much less vote for them. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm honestly not surprised. In fact, I'm surprised that we even... I, I was surprised when Trump came around, because I didn't know that Trump was that strong. No, man. And I'll I didn't honest, know that there were all like these young the first... people who were for what's right, kind of. Right. Yeah. yeah well, I, even I, as a, I was a pretty liberal guy in 2016, and I was, I was campaigning for Bernie, and then... Yeah. After like he backed Hillary Clinton, I was just like, "No way, man! This is crazy." Right. And I just went to Canada for a while to escape all the nonsense. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But when I came back, I knew after Trump had won that there was hope for America. Yeah. So I mean, if Hillary had won, I don't think I would have come back. I probably would have stayed in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate it, Levon. Thank you, man. Okay, man. All right. Have a great day. Have all right. You as well. Take care. Take care. All right. John out of Pennsylvania, first time caller. What's up, John? Uh, fantastic. I'll tell you what, a number of people have told me to call in here and I'm here. Okay. There it is. And and, and perhaps they they'll identify me by what I say. I say education, hard work is white supremacy. Now, I don't know exactly what the topic is here, but I'd like to say a few things to my friend Joe and my friend Marcus. You're getting a lot of you're getting a lot of wind, John. Are you outside? Oh my gosh, I'm I'm outside in the wind. I apologize. It's, it's sounding better yes, now. Yes, I am. I, I uh, trust me. When I walked away from humanity, I walked into the woods. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, the wonderful thing about uh, where we live is we have a choice. Nobody needs to knock anybody else. Nobody else needs to say such things like Antifa does slamming the right. Yeah. The left doesn't need to slam the right. The right doesn't need to slam the left. We're Americans. I'm a veteran. I paid for my education by the military. Okay. There is one thing that trumps all of this fear and this hate, and it's called love. 
Yeah. Perhaps some of us can identify with that. There's probably a lot more I'd like to say, but I've been sitting out here in the cold and the wind, and I forgot everything I really wanted <laughs> to say. Friends, I understand. Keep searching. Y'all keep searching for the truth. A lot of lies known as politics has infiltrated the world. It's called media. And John. For heaven's sakes, people, we're Americans. John, are you black or white? I'm black. Okay, right on. Well, I appreciate it, John. Physician. I'm a sick retired physician. Oh, no. And I'm sick of what's going on. Can anybody out there identify with that? Yeah, a lot of people My are. My gosh, we're, we're Americans. Could you imagine what was going on in World War II? The, the, the thought process of we're all one? You know, we are one. We're one humanity. I know, but we we can't be pretending to be one with the with the anti-American people, of which they're like half the Wait country. Wait a second! Now you're throwing politics at me again. You're that's not Democrat. That's not politics. At me again. I hear it all the time. I cannot believe it. Oh, I really cannot. I only got so many days here, and the rest of us are all in the same boat. But some of us, well, what have you? Jesse's living forever. <laughs> Who, Jesse? Jesse Lee Peterson, yeah, he's living forever. <laughs> well, bless us all. <laughs> bless us all, you know that? Uh, yeah. That's what I want. Hey, I, another thing. Bless me, fix you. Think about that from a quantum physics perspective. I don't know and what that means, mirror. but thank you, man. I in appreciate words, it, John. Whatever I project onto you comes back to me. Yeah, it's so kind of true. you, yeah. it comes back to me, and that is reality. Yeah. Think about that. Folks on the other end listening, Joe, Marcus, <laughs> give a little, get a little. I have no, I, I cannot tell you how much I've get. And, and, and another thing, Marcus I, is nice. I hear these things, I hear this nonsense about race, <laughs> color. I'm a black man, okay? Yeah. I have thrived in this country as a physician. And I have met some of the most wonderful white people in the world. Some of the I've lived with some of the most wonderful black people in the world, but what things are turning into right now is a fake sense of hate, and it's all it's like Luciferian. Yeah, I do I understand, not man. get it. I do not get it because I am a Christic. I live in love. How old are you, John? Fifty-six. Nice. So you're you're not well physically, my friend. I, uh, no, not really. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm, I'm in great shape. I go to the gym every day, but they tell me I have something that uh, I, I, I take I take some bleaching liquids for. Let's put it that way. For okay. Uh, I, 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 I don't play the... Uh, I don't do the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission. For, oh, good. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I c I'm kind of catching on. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I think you do. It's that called stuff chemotherapy. Will, right, that stuff I will kill you. I don't live by the lie. Good. I'm not a child of the lie. And and as a matter of fact, I, I live, I thrive, I go down, I live, I thrive, I go down. But I respect for that. For heaven's sakes, people, let's live together in love, shall we? I mean, we're called America. Ami Ra Ka. One light love. Is that what that means? That's what that means. Look it up. <laughs> all right, John. I appreciate that, man. Call again. Bless you all. Fix me. Yeah. All right. Take care. All right. James, take care. Thank you. <laughs> I'm laughing because Ms. What's her name? Ms. Danny69 says, Oh, he likes you, Marcus. <laughs> so, um,. Beta Boot Camp and others, hang tight. Let me quickly cover this thing about Hong Kong. Did you guys catch it? Um, so I got this tip from a listener, a faithful listener, longtime supporter of Bond and Jesse Lee Peterson. And I've been hearing her calls since probably before I was producer. And then I heard her calls when I was producer and sometimes catch the emails and tweets. So appreciate this uh, tip, listener. But I got this tip of a blog post on J.R. Nyquist's blog. And he posted a, a um, write-up from a man named Chiang C-H-I-A-N-G Chen is his, is his last name. C-H-E-N. 
And this guy, according to this guy, the history of China is littered with controlled opposition and all kinds of mess. Controlled opposition is when the bad guys um, control, when evil, basically, I'll, I'll describe it in like my wannabe spiritual terms, right? When evil controls both the people fighting for what's right and the people fighting f for what's evil. For example, in China, he's giving China as, and Hong Kong as an example of this controlled opposition, where the communist Chinese government w control, basically controls the Hong Kong government, right? But the claim is that the communist Chinese government also controls or has its influences inside of the Hong Kong so-called pro-democracy protests. And that's why you see all this violence and stuff. <sighs> so, um, this guy, Chiang Chen, in J.R. Nyquist's blog, talks about these guys. One guy is Martin Lee, who is the guy with the glasses, Joel. He, like, looks like a sleaze. <laughs> I could be wrong, right? But he doesn't look like I would be trusting him. Like, his smile is too big. You know, when people are fake, they smile too big. I, do I have the pictures in there? Um, you don't... Um, just show that big picture. I'll just point him out. He's the one on the top right, I think. Yeah. See, that smile is too big. That's that guy on the top right corner. I'm showing a f picture of four pictures in front of the incident that I reported on of the guy getting set on fire. He, he didn't die, I don't think. He was saying, you guys are not Chinese, referring to the protesters. Yeah, there he is. So that guy's name is Martin Lee. He's founder of the Hong Kong Democratic Party. And Democrat is a dirty word in America, right? We know that. And apparently, according to this writer, he originally wanted to call it the Hong Kong Communist Party, interestingly enough. And he wrote a letter to Bill Clinton back in the 90s to let China join the World Trade Organization. Pretending that there's, well, he said that I'm for rule of law. And a lot of people in China are for rule of law. He let us in. Uh, but then they're not about the rule of law. They, China is so uh, notorious, according to everything that I hear, right? For, like, defying our laws, stealing technology from the West. They're good thieves, <laughs> it's Chinese, right? Um, stealing our technology and copyrights. And violating patents and things like that. And this guy just looks like slime. This Martin Lee guy. But he's part of, apparently involved in this, these Hong Kong protests. And another suspected Beijing agent was this guy Jimmy Lai. Whom I watched in an, do an interview with um, some organization, think tank, pro-freedom type of, kind of establishment uh, conservative think tank over here in America, Jimmy Lai. And he takes an anti-communist stance, but yet he supports the Hong Kong Democrat Party, Democratic Party. He's like one of the leading fundraisers. So I'm leery about him too. I, and I didn't really, in that interview with the guy, it was kind of a softball interview it felt like. He didn't really get answer the questions about these guys rioting. What does he think about the rioting? Maybe there is a time to riot, <laughs> but most of the time, I don't think so. Maybe, but, you know, most of the riots that we've seen in this country have been totally fake. Communist. So, um, so I don't know. I don't know where he really is, what type of person Jimmy Lai really is. And then there's this young guy, Joshua Wong, who's the young guy on the bottom, if you show the picture again. Uh, Joshua Wong is the young guy with the glasses, lower right. Jimmy Lai is the guy on the upper left. Joshua Wong supports Catalan independence in Spain, oddly. Which, so do the Chinese communists, so who cares? But this woman, there's this girl, Joey Su. Joey, J-O-E-Y. Su, S-I-U. And she was interviewed by this British 
sounding guy, Tim Sebastian of DW News, which is Deutsch something news, German outlet. And Sebastian says that CU's solidarity, solidarity with the violent demonstrators and her unwillingness to denounce them has a totalitarian ring. She smiles but says she cannot criticize other protesters. When asked, there she is. Look at her. I don't trust that woman. There's another picture where she's looking down and to the left. Doesn't that usually mean she's lying? <laughs> I don't know. I heard that somewhere. But she merely repeats, repeats slogans and refers to the need for change. And she, she blames the Hong Kong government or the Chinese police or something for forcing them to break the law or be violent or something like that. And so I just don't trust him. Just reminds me of Black Lives Matter stuff. So um, then the, the, the kicker, the part where it actually matters to America, because most of us are like, what does this even matter to America, right? Let the Hong Kong and China fight it out. Well, there's stupid politicians, including, I think, you know, so-called conservative politicians in this country, America, who have this, it's currently titled Hong Kong Freedom and Democracy Act. Democracy is a bad thing anyways. Democracy means, democracy in the Middle East meant the Arab Spring, which meant um, sh more Sharia law. <laughs> so democracy is not a good thing. You need, if you're going to have democracy, you need the people, that's the majority rules. You need the people to be decent, but the p most people are not decent. So we don't want democracy. Um, but if this act becomes law in the United States, Hong Kong Freedom and Democracy Act, the way it's written, they have a visa waiver in that bill, which would allow, according to um, this guy, this blog post, which would allow millions of Chinese, as if we need more, right? They're already flooding in, to enter the United States as refugees. And we all know what refugees do. They end up causing trouble here. Having anchor babies here, who, and then some of them become so-called citizens and become Ilhan Omars of the world. The social justice warriors against America. And social justice is not justice. So we don't need more refugees here. And thank God that President Trump, last month I heard, we, got, we admitted no refugees in that whole month. That was nice. But there's this Office of Refugee and Resettlement. And Jesse has interviewed another guy who was another woman, actually, Amer pro America woman, Anne Corcoran, who used to run this blog called Refugee Resettlement Watch. Refugee Resettlement Watch. And it got shut down by WordPress, oddly. But she ran it for years. And she still runs another website called something else. And I don't remember, but Anne Corcoran. I think there's no E at the end of Anne. And then Cor, C-O-R, C-O-R-A-N, Corcoran, I think. But she talks about the refugee problem. A lot of these people are, these, <laughs> they're criminals. They don't have our values. Uh, anyways, it's a big mess. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys caught that um, segment and you could check out the blog post. I shared it on my Twitter, the Hick Report, and all that stuff. So check it out. If I get a chance, I want to touch on this attack on Tony Robbins by BuzzFeed, which is just a liberal attack on men, in my opinion, and on the icons of recent history, right? Which I don't even care that much about Tony Robbins. I never cared at all, really. But it's an attack on men, I see it as. They're accusing him of sexual assault and stuff like that. But first... Joe, out of Phoenix, Arizona, somebody called him by his name, mentioned him earlier this hour. I think that was John. So, Joe, from Phoenix, Arizona, what's up? How you doing, James? Doing fine. Yeah, I think that was John Barney talking about Marcus and I. First, I mean, he was rambling some of us. I didn't really understand what his criticism of Marcus and I was. I can't really speak exactly to what his concerns were, but... Yeah, I didn't catch it exactly either. Anyway, just calling to get your views on, you see how the report came out this morning, how Trump only released the aid to Ukraine after being briefed on the whistleblower's report? No, I didn't look at it. I didn't hear about that yet. 
I think that that's, if that's true, and I'm not sure it is yet, if that's true, that could be the one thing that that, that they can hang their hat on. Because everything else was um, just speculation and hearsay, really. Yeah. You know, it's it's like, you know, there are so many leaks in the Trump administration and people undermining, especially people that were, I mean, some of them are people that he appointed, like he brought it on himself. And then yeah. some of it is people that are kind of embedded, you know, employees that you can't just fire or employees where you don't even know where they stand. And so... And there's this concern about, so he was, um, so he wanted Joe Biden investigated. And a normal thinking person looking at the situation with Joe Biden, it seems like that's a worthy thing to just have a, take a look at. What does he have to hide? Why do, why do, why is it such a bad thing to investigate him? And the, I know that the, the claim is, oh, he's a, he's a political rival, therefore you can't investigate him because it looks too politically motivated. But in reality, like, some of these people in the government, Hillary Clinton, been in the government forever, Joe Biden, been in the government forever, and being in the government forever doesn't necessarily mean you're corrupt, but we know they're Democrats, they don't stand for what's right. They, uh, Hillary is, is kind of known as Crooked Hillary, Joe Biden is just seems slimy. And then Joe Biden's son, it's just a weird situation. And then the whole DNC leaks server thing. It's like the the mainstream and the establishment, the media and the Democrats and the rhinos don't want to just want to hide their faces and eyes from this stuff. It's like they don't actually even want to look at it when Trump wants to look at it, prosecute, investigate. But that's the whole that's the whole basis for this thing. Um, for this so-called impeachment hearing is him wanting to investigate people that seemingly, to me, should be investigated. Well, it's all a big, huge waste of time anyway, this whole impeachment, because yeah. the Senate is never going to vote to remove Trump anyway. So they're wasting all of our tax dollars, and, and that's the real thing that I'm just all be angry about. Yeah, it's a big show for sure. I mean, Trump, I mean, B- Bill Clinton was impeached but not removed. I wasn't really aware that much because I was in high school. I mean, even when I was in college, I didn't really care. But what did you think about the Bill Clinton thing? Being impeached but not removed. What did you think well, about that, that? That was just all political theater also. But it backfired on the Republicans then because they lost the presidency and both houses in the next election. And that, and that could very much happen again to the Democrats now. Um, no, he, we, the 1998, oh, you mean the 1998 midterms? Yeah. Okay. Because in 2000, we won barely, the Republicans won, I say. I say we, but so, maybe America lost, so, right? Yeah. So they lost, they lost the White House, and they lost both, both houses of Congress. No, no, yeah. we got, after, after Clinton came Bush. W. Right. 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 Yeah. A Republican, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anyways. Anyway, but yeah, it's just big waste of time and tax dollars. Who are you voting for? I haven't decided yet. Are you considering voting for Trump? Are you open to it? I'm actually looking at the other Republican candidate. Oh, really? Interesting. Who did you vote for in the last one? Kasich. Kasich. Yeah. I guess. I guess. The Republican governor of, of, of Ohio. Right. Yeah, I know. The yeah. he's kind of like a nervous guy. Um, yeah, interesting. He had some some good policies. I did not know that about you. Well, you know, I've been I've been a GOP political action committee founder for twenty plus years. Okay. I just never was a Trump guy. Yeah. Well, at least you didn't. Are, are you still registered Republican? <laughs> Actually, a few years ago, I changed to independent. Okay. That was yeah. during 2016? Uh, actually, just, just just before that. Was that because of Trump or why? No, I'm just sick of the, the, the gridlock and partisanship 
partisanship and you see I was actually I was actually selected to be on a civilian leadership committee and I went I went and worked with Kay Barry Hutchinson and a couple of other senators and I saw up close and personal just how much gridlock there was in, in DC and how much partisanship and there's this difference. yeah yeah it's it is a mess for sure it's it's um these people are so fake Anyways, Joe, I appreciate that interesting insight into your uh, stances in life. Yeah. All right. John, call, call back in and make better sense next time if you have criticism for, for Marcus and I. Yeah. And shout out to and Sorry, Skip. I, I don't have any out of control life stories <laughs> right, right, right now. So. <laughs> All right, Joe. Take care, man. Take care. Bye. Bye. Uh, you know what? Um, let me get to some more calls, and then if I get a chance, I'll do Tony Robbins. Beta Boot Camp out of Boston, Massachusetts. What's up, Beta Boot Camp? Hey, what's going on, James? Hey. Um, I tried the chicken sandwich. Nice. From Popeyes. I got to get uh, a couple of these reviews out so that people know. Um, real quick, uh, um, secret ingredient, cornflakes. Cornflakes. They bread it with cornflakes. Genius. And it's 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 a pretty good sandwich. I'm not gonna lie, but it's it's not anything to kill anybody over or anything like that. Obviously, it's just a chicken sandwich. It, okay. It, it, but it's different with the cornflakes. Um, and you'll get more reviews on it, but of course. I want to go into another direction um, about Trump. L- let me quickly you know, ask uh, you. Let me quickly ask you, though. Let me cut in because last person who reviewed it, Chris from Arizona, said that it didn't need. She said that the bread was the best part, and she said um, that it didn't need the pickle. I think was it pickle? No, they put pickle on a uh, Chick Fil A. Okay, but not in the Popeyes. Not, they, the Popeyes, there was no pickle. Oh, they have some type of mayonnaise and of the, the bread. It's it's really all. There's not a lot of shit. There's no frills with it. It's pretty much a straightforward chicken sandwich. Was it? Sp- did you get um, the spicy? I didn't get the spicy, James, or else I would have had to eat about eighteen tums, and it would have turned <laughs> into a scene. <laughs> uh, sh- did she say it was too greasy? Was it too greasy? No, it wasn't. It wasn't great. I didn't think it was greasy at all. And at the last bite I took, I said, "What is this? What is this?" And it was a cornflake. Ah. And I was like, "Wow, that's pretty good." <laughs> I got to give him credit. That's pretty good. Is uh, um, did your stomach start to hurt? No, not at all. Okay, maybe it's I got a spice. A, I, got a, I got an alpha stomach, James. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, what did it have on it? Was the bread good? Uh, the bread was good. It was a typical hamburger bun. Okay. The bread was good. Um, and again, they put, uh, like, a, a different kind of mayonnaise on it, but I don't eat mayonnaise, so yeah, I got neither. it plain. So it was, it was, it, I, it's gross. Um, me too. It was pretty much, but the cornflakes was, the, the, I think that's what's causing all the ruckus. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Is the cornflakes. <laughs> but um, real quick. Um, yeah. As far as the cops and the hiring, they said you guys said that it that um it's down about fifty percent. I heard something like um, that. Yeah, I am concerned about the quality of person. Yeah, that that people are going to have to start hiring. Because, um, I I mean I my department was a motley crew, but I mean at the end of the day we were all all right. Yeah, but if if the numbers just aren't there. I have a feeling we're going to have the Portland, Oregon Police Department everywhere we go, and um, yeah. that's that's the most scary thing to me. That's well, I mean, me. I've made the point that people, the quality of people has gone down across the board, right? I mean, yeah, it's kind of making true. the same point as you said, but I that's mean, true. like hu- human beings are becoming seemingly more evil currently in a, in the current wave. And so, of course, you're going to run into situations where cops do wrong. Oh, absolutely. And so, yeah, I think you are right. And they've been attacking the police for decades with through propaganda, starting with the, I guess, with the black community, with this F the police stuff and the cr- fake cries of racism and all that. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, there, there were plenty of things that went on like that, and, and I worked in Cambridge, Massachusetts, so yeah. you want to talk about, about bizarro world, and especially being a cop, but um, it, it, it's just, it, it's not a deputy sheriff, correctional officer, but being a cop, anything law enforcement, even like a security guard, if you have a uniform now and you're out there, <laughs> there should be a hell of a lot more undercovers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good it, point, man. It, it, it's definitely strange, but um, all right. Um, I guess that's pretty much it, James. And um, chicken sandwich was all right. Concerned about the quality because, and the thing about evil is, it's, it's almost like we're being desensitized to evil yeah. in a strange way. So it's very easy to be evil. Yep. You know? Totally. So it, it, it's it's we're become a joke. We're going through strange times, but hey, twenty twenties vastly approaching and we got some work to do yep definitely beta boot camp thank you man have, have fun james everybody in the chat love you guys even marcus and joe love you too nice <laughs> all right take care take care. take care all right james out of texas what's up james hello yes uh okay. yeah i wanted to make a statement uh what you said about how because a celebrity has a different political opinion, you say you should not support them? Yeah. Especially if they're out there being nasty, as Robert De Niro is. So Robert De Niro, if you guys don't know, has severe Trump derangement syndrome. He's gone out there on multiple occasions, trashing and smearing Trump, just making a fool of himself. Just giving up all semblance of dignity that he used to have. And so it makes, it just turns me off, and I don't advocate supporting anybody, rewarding anybody for that type of, uh, pulling that type of mess. It's kind of like the difference between, um, I don't know, let's say in and out and Chick-fil-A. in and out has avoided all controversy, at least as far as I know. But Chick-fil-A, they've, uh, gone and openly, seemingly kissed up to the gays. Even though they didn't even mention the gays, right? But they... They caved, apparently, looks like. So it just makes you turned off to Chick-fil-A. Even though in and out may underhandedly be doing the same thing, they're not going out in the open. For one, they never took a stance. And then for two, they didn't... Um, in and out is a, is a burger joint, for those of you guys who don't know. <laughs> it's out here in California, and maybe like Arizona, maybe Nevada. But mainly California, family-owned. But, it's Catholic, actually. But, it just is a turnoff when you see people publicly, openly, unashamedly fail like that. How, what do you think? Well, if I have a favorite actor and he has a different political opinion, I shouldn't stop liking him. You can still like him, but don't support him. And it's not just a different political opinion. It's not just a different political opinion. Robert De Niro is openly evil. Okay, but why should I <laughs> stop liking him as an actor? I didn't say you can you should stop liking him as an actor. You can watch his movies for free uh, some other way. <laughs> I'm not saying pirate. Free. I'm saying uh, I'm saying wait till it comes on. Wait till the Irishman comes on TV, then watch it. Why not the movie theater? You can do it if you want, but I'm not. I don't advocate for it. Oh. I say oh. I say you should you should boycott all that you can, all that you have the stomach for. Right? I mean, practically everything is corrupt. It's hard to live in the world and not not buy from a company that is openly supporting evil. All the banks do. They kiss up to the gays like crazy. And they discriminate against conservatives like crazy. Maybe you should just join a credit union, I guess. I mean, you have to live in the world and do business with people, of course. So, I mean, Trump did it his whole life. Dealt with it, all kinds of people. So, just, but, what I, I'm just encouraging people based on the best that I can see. Is Robert De Niro your favorite actor? No. <laughs> Do you like him? I don't know. I haven't watched his movie. Okay. Who is somebody that you disagree with that you still support as an actor or a celebrity? Mm. I 
I don't know. It's kind of hard to think. Yeah, I know what you mean. Gentrification of cancel culture. <laughs> That's what Malkuth X says. Yeah, I mean, basically all of Hollywood is very corrupt. The only halfway decent guy out there, seemingly, is, um, who's that, 90-year-old guy? Um, Clint Eastwood. He seems like he's okay. <laughs> but, I mean, you can't be a, I don't know. That's, that's just my take. Anything else, nope. James? Uh, what happened? Anything else? Mike is up. Oh, no. Well, I appreciate it. Call again, man. And we can talk more. All right, bye. Yeah, maybe you can't hear me. We, we got to turn up these mics or something. I think they can barely hear me. Kyle out of Denver, Colorado. How are you, Kyle? Hey, uh, just a second. I'm, I'm doing good. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, hey, hey, how's it going? What's up? Can you hear me fine? Yeah, I can hear you good. Uh, Alaska, I thought I was falling asleep. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what's up, James, from Texas, but appreciate the ask, the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I don't want to bog the show down, but this is a topic that, I don't know, you don't hear much on Jesse about, but yeah. the economy... Under Trump's economy, jobs are, uh, wages are increasing and everything. But like the rural areas and stuff, it's it's hard to translate that over into those areas. I was like, what was your take on that? How how can how can we get the people to the jobs? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know the situation, so I have I'm blank on that. I would say that there's like a lot of, I was going to say that there's a lot of online jobs, <laughs> but I don't know. But the rural well, communities, are they, are they particularly suffering? I know the Appalachians have for years, maybe decades, had a lot of poor people, and a lot of them did support Trump. I know that what, some of the stuff that Trump is doing, such as getting rid of a lot of regulations, is yeah. very helpful to people across the board, businesses across the board, because they don't have to, you don't have to be a giant company that can afford to jump through all these hoops that, you know, that people are being forced to based on stupid things like the EP, the Environmental So-Called Protection Agency, and all, all sorts of crazy different um, regulations that these big companies can afford to do, to deal with, but smaller companies and stuff and would be competition can't and it's not even reason some of these regulations aren't even reasonable so i think that that could help but i don't know oh yeah i know like here in colorado it's like you know you see uh you know in rural areas they're building pipelines and stuff and you see these guys welders and stuff and they bring their rvs and set up in campgrounds instead of buying you know so they i mean they are getting it is spreading out yeah but uh you know it's uh like California, they had that railway, which everybody in California says that was a big flop. Yeah. But uh, it, it just seems like, you know, that if you had a, tr you know, if you could go like from the uh, Midwest, you know, to like, say, like Chicago or the big metro hubs, and you could get people from the uh, rural areas to the metro areas, that would be, but maybe that's something he'll tackle in 2020. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't like the centralization of people around cities. I mean, some of it is natural, right? But I don't like this forced, this planning where they have like, they're tearing down old buildings and building like these high rise apartments with, um, with stores down below. And they're just trying yeah. to round people up into like these places where if everybody had to, like evacuate, it would be a major traffic jam. Traffic's already bad enough in LA, and they don't want to deal oh, yeah. with it. They don't want to deal with with normal people issues. They want to deal with stupid things like environmentalism and LGBT crap and attacking gun rights and stuff in California. Well, I think you know. I mean that uh, the it's good that we have some regulations, but yeah, the, some yeah. of them just don't make any sense. You yep. know, but. I think, uh, yeah, the the more that they can, 
you know, keep people in the, the areas that they want to live in, in the rural areas, and just get jobs to them that would be bet, the best for all. But you were right earlier when you were saying that a lot of people are working, you know, like cyber through, yeah, you know, their their jobs are through a computer now. Yep. You can do it, you know, from home. Yeah. So maybe that's part of the solution. Maybe so, man. Well, I but, appreciate uh, that's it. All I, have. I appreciate it, Kyle. Yeah, you bet, man. I'll talk to you later. All right. Take care. I had one other caller that I wanted to get to, but he dropped. So um, let me get to this this uh, Tony Robbins thing. So Tony Robbins is now suing BuzzFeed, which is nice, I guess. He's fighting back. A lot of men can't afford to sue, right, when you're smeared by the media. And the media are so evil. One thing that Bill O'Reilly said in his book is that media chieftains or whatever enjoy breaking human beings. It's a power thing. And so that's why they really want to break Trump, because they can't. And he keeps on going after them and pounding them, which I love. But um, this, this Tony Robbins guy is a self-help guru. He's like an icon. And he was known as like a likable guy, right? Nobody, he didn't, he didn't step into politics or controversy, which may make him be kind of weak, I guess, because he, I don't know. But maybe not. Because that's his brand. He's like he has his career in helping people across the political spectrum, right? Every, even the liberals need help, right? Or they think they they think they need help in some ways when they need help in other ways. But he's suing them from Ireland, which is odd. Um, according to Fox News, BuzzFeed News reported that Robbins, age fifty nine, he was accused of sexually assaulting a minor. BuzzFeed has been doing a series of hit pieces on Tony Robbins. It reminds me of the takedown of Bill Cosby. And they've been, they've taken down a whole bunch of other, like, male men icons. Who have, like, kept their noses clean, at least outwardly, right? So this was way back in 1985 when he was 25 years old. Suppose, where he supposedly sexually assaulted, which is not even a... A real word, right? Um, this minor. Kissed her, according to her, right? And according to maybe some witnesses, who knows? Um, BuzzFeed News only identified this female as L, Which makes me think that they're cowards. And I hate that this the media falls into this crap. Where the, the journalists will not name the accuser. To protect them, right? Because usually, like, the accusers are poor. And can't afford security because when you're an accuser, this is the rationale I'm assuming, right? When you name the accuser, then you're essentially doxing the accuser and the accuser can't afford to protect herself because it's usually a woman, right? And so they don't name her. But when you can't name her, you can't scrutinize her. You can't see "Mm, what type of person is this. It's just like this so-called whistleblower. Or this anonymous guy who's going after Trump. But it's interesting when you hear how the whistle, the so-called whistleblower who's behind the so-called impeachment hearing of Trump. Or this anonymous guy who's attacking Trump from within. A t- total turncoat. Um, you see how they talk. You see what kind of people that they are. They're liberals. They're anti-Trump people. Not logical people. So it is with these accusers. When you, when you hear them talk or see the words that that are attributed to them, you see what they're about, but they don't really say a lot. But it's just l- makes me very leery. You should, an accused should be able to face his accuser, but they're not allowing that. They're just allowing, publishing all this speculation, all these, all these so-called accounts, witness accounts, but the times have changed so much. You hear, you heard that guy yesterday call my show, Mike, a uh, nice guy from San Diego. Saying that, um, that what Bill Cosby did when, it, when he gave those so-called rape drugs, which used to be actually party drugs, was rape. And if we're losing a good, decent, seeming conservative guy like Mike in San Diego, I don't know if he's conservative, but he's looking for what's right and he's falling for this propaganda, that means that that's evil. That means it's evil when you accuse 
And especially like decades later, it's so ridiculous. So Robbins is suing from Ireland, but so has Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel have sued Heat Magazine from Dublin, Ireland. So I don't know, it must be a trend. But it just makes me so leery about this stuff. I never, I never buy into it. BuzzFeed News, News is trash. They tried to call him racist for saying the N-word to show blacks that they should get over the N-word. And so they are smear merchants. All right, guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Thanksgiving. If you tune in. All right, guys. Take care.